The world of wrestling is very vast. There are so many different wrestlers, all with various shapes, sizes, and styles. In modern wrestling, there are so many different styles to wrestling. Technical wrestling, lucha libre, comedy wrestling, and of course, deathmatch wrestling. And with these different styles come different promotions that exist to accommodate fans of a specific style. And also with that comes individual wrestlers who only work exclusively in one style. And for some reason, many wrestlers choose that style to be deathmatch, and they choose to be a deathmatch wrestler. The world of deathmatch wrestling is absolutely insane, and unfortunately, within the world of deathmatch wrestling are wrestlers who have gained distinct reputations for actions in and or out of the ring. Today, we're going to discuss three of those wrestlers. This is the deathmatch wrestling degenerates. Before we get into the video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll give you until the count of three to do so. And let's get into it. Angel O Demonio is a name you probably hadn't heard of and also a name that I have probably absolutely butchered and you probably haven't heard of this name unless you're a hardcore Lucha Libre fan or, like me, know about the incident that I'm about to discuss. Angel debuted in 1987 and according to Cage Match, his entire career he never wrestled outside of Mexico. He only ever made one appearance for AAA, and he made three appearances for GCW as part of a crossover show with another Mexican promotion, as well as deathmatch promotion Zona 23, but he would make dirt sheet headlines in 2018, and he would make these headlines for the absolute wrong reasons. His first break in America was for a reason you wouldn't want it to be for, because this is what took place, and why he was in the news. Tenía preparado. Oh, viene por unos tabiques. Y vaya que son grandes. Así que esto ya pasando a ser de una lucha en donde estaban el ataúd y el alambre de púas y las sillas. Oh, que sillazo el que le está dando el cuervo a la cabeza del ángel demonio. Durísimo. Oh. Le repite la dosis. No se puede esconder. No se puede hacer un lado el ángel demonio. Todavía resentía el primer impacto y recibió el segundo. Mucha atención. Tiene dos tabiques arriba. ¡Oh! This match took place on the 19th of November 2018 on a G1 slash Lucha Memes. Yes, there is a promotion called Lucha Memes slash Lucha Libre Boom collaboration show. It was a casket death match between Angel and a Puerto Rican wrestler called Cuerno. As you saw from the footage, getting hit by that cinder block knocked Cuerno unconscious. And after staggering to his feet, he was rushed straight to hospital and he had to undergo emergency surgery in order to remove a blood clot from his brain, all caused by that right there. Thankfully, the surgery was a success and he made a full recovery, but Demonio was widely condemned by the entirety of the wrestling world with some very angry tweets towards his name. Kurt Angle particularly said, give me 10 seconds with that stupid mf -er that threw the brick. Shouldn't be anywhere near the business. Cuerno was suspended indefinitely from that state in Mexico from wrestling. However, he didn't really stop his wrestling career and he did continue to wrestle pretty soon after the incident took place and on a regular basis across Mexico. And his career wasn't exactly too hurt because it's not like he was getting booked for major promotions anyway. The final injuries in the end for Cuerno were a skull fracture and an epidural hematoma, if I said that right once again. And a benefit show was held for him to help pay back the money for all the medical fees and all that, which is very wholesome W. G-Raver began his career in 2007 in CZW, being really thrown right into the deep end, debuting for CZW. However, that match would only be the one match, and it would only be a couple years after that he would come back to CZW, but first he would go over the next few years, wrestling for various promotions across the independent scene in America. He won many titles and really established himself as being a deathmatch wrestler. But G-Raven never really got his big break, and it was the rise of GCW which was very beneficial to him, like it was very beneficial to other deathmatch wrestlers, who are now getting a lot more regular bookings for a better production company like GCW, and probably getting paid better, I imagine. Because carny deathmatch promoters are still very much out there. 
He made his first appearances for GCW in 2016, which would also be the same year he would return to CZW, which would signify that he's done pretty well between the time he initially debuted there and now, showing that he's done well to get back there. And 2016 to 2020 would also end up being the most busy years of his career and easily the prime of his career. He won the GCW Tag Team Championship in July of 2021 with Jimmy Lloyd. He only held it for a week, but this was significant because it showed how G-Raver had done pretty alright for himself on the indie scene, all things considered. He never got his big break from a bigger company, but he pretty much reached a good height that he can reach for an independent wrestler, you know, a champion for GCW who one of the higher indie companies. But as quick as he rose, the harder he fell. On the 2nd of March 2022, a woman accused G-Raver of physically assaulting her. And a couple months later, she would post some screenshots between her and G-Raver, showing some pretty damning screenshots and some pretty uncomfortable screenshots to read. In her initial statement, she also mentioned the following. This man is dangerous, manipulative, and a drug addict. He's a danger to every woman he encounters and shouldn't be in this community anymore. And there's some undeniable weight to that statement, given that months later, G-Raver was busted by the cops for drug possession. In fact, here's a list of everything he was charged with. Manufacture, delivery, or possession with intent to manufacture or deliver, obviously, for drugs. Violation of hazard regulation. Use slash possession of drug paraphernalia. Intentional possession of a controlled substance by a person not registered, possession of marijuana, small personal use, driving under the influence of alcohol or a controlled substance, failure to keep right, failure to use safety belt, driver and front seat occupant, and careless driving. It has now been over a year since G-Raver last wrestled, and I'd be surprised if we ever saw him in the ring again. Drake Younger debuted in 2001 and began wrestling across the US Indies and very early on was getting himself involved in deathmatch promotions and mixing it up with some of the maddest lads on the wrestling scene. Wrestling for companies such as IWA Mid-South and grappling with the likes of Necro Butcher, Vortex, Ian Rotten, Jimmy Jacobs, Chris Candido, Matt Seidel, Chuck Taylor and many more. But it wouldn't be until 2006 when he joined CZW, and this was the move that really changed his career, and made his career. CZW, if you don't know by the way, it was known for being probably the maddest, most insane wrestling company out there. Just full of hardcore matches, uh, sex and violence related storylines, just crazy stuff. It was on a similar level to IWA Mid-South, which was probably just a bit beneath it in terms of the scale of car crash, and Younger had already worked at IWA Mid-South, so it was naturally time for him to go up. He wrestled in CZW from 2006 until 2014, and he goes down as one of CZW's greatest and most successful wrestlers in the company's history. A two-time ultraviolet underground champion, a former world heavyweight, tag team, and junior heavyweight champion, as well as being the only ever CZW wrestler to win both the Tournament of Death and the Best of the Best tournament. He retired from in-ring competition in 2014 to sign with the WWE as a referee, but everyone was really happy for him. Everyone was very pleased to see Drake Younger, a guy who's worked his ass off for eight years, get his big break and work at the WWE. He even came back to CZW in 2016 to be inducted into their Hall of Fame. So there was a lot of love for him from the CZW fans. But slowly over time, that love for Younger was lost. A lot happened while he was in the WWE in a very quick period of time. At some point during his tenure in the WWE, Drake became linked with the far-right group QAnon. I am not going to explain who QAnon are because I can already read the comments. But tensions with Drake Wirtz hit a boiling point in WWE during the pandemic. It was a very chaotic time for WWE and it didn't seem like he made it much better. He became involved in a series of controversies in regards to his conduct and alleged political beliefs. He was shown to have attended Zoom meetings for school county board meetings, where he would make unsubstantiated arguments against mandated mask wearing. He also attended one of these meetings in person, and it was here that he claimed wearing masks assist child predators. He also went to this board meeting by missing an NXT taping, by the way. Allegedly, he also loudly criticized other wrestlers were being vaccinated. He stormed out of the 2020 NXT TakeOver In Your House event after Triple H said that people of all religions were welcome in WWE and apparently he was also using his corporate email to coordinate activities for a QAnon adjacent anti-child trafficking charity. He was released in May of 2021 for what is believed to be down to all of these controversies. Since then, he's came out of retirement and has been wrestling for XPW. He's had matches as soon as... Wow, yesterday, oh my god. 
He ran for Florida GOP where in his campaign he blamed the fake news and Marxist left for cancelling him and also disavowed QAnon so I guess there was that. And obviously he, he lost. Obviously.